Hey guys, what's up? welcome to another video of my Squad Double A. And this is your review for the Chelsea vs Bournemouth game, which ended 1 0 in the Carabao Cup quarter final, Stamford Bridge. And we are now through to the semi final along with Manchester City, Burton, and Tottenham Hotspur, who did officially beat Arsenal 2 0 at the Emirates. So that would have been interesting to, uh, to watch, and I'll see the highlights later. But regarding our game, wow. Wow, I mean, it was a really good game of football for a neutral, for myself as well. I couldn't make it, unfortunately. I had an opportunity to go, but I didn't. Uh, you know, obviously, school, etc. Midweek is a bit difficult to uh, to attend the match, but watching it from home, it was a fantastic game, and it was nerve-wracking at times. Bournemouth gave it a good go, and to be fair to Bournemouth, fair play to him. They gave it a go, and you can see why Eddie Howe is rated so highly. He's simply a world-class manager. There's nothing... There's nothing to take about it. I rate him really highly. They've got a really nice setup, a really good team. Callum Wilson was really good, and we've been heavily linked with him as well. But regarding our team, we had a very, very strong lineup. Kepa, Arifa, Balaga in goal. Fullbacks of Emerson and Aspilagueta. Two centre backs of Antonio Rodrigo, Andres Christensen. Three in midfield of uh, Cesc Fabregas as the register. Matteo Kovacic and Ross Barkley. Ruben Loftus Sheik on the right ring. And uh, Willian on left wing with Juro up front. I thought the first half we were all over Bournemouth. Bournemouth was soaking up the pressure. We had so much possession, so much of the ball, but we couldn't really create clear cut chances. Every time we got to the final third, we seemed clueless. We ran out of options. Bournemouth defended really, really well. We couldn't really move well. I thought the Juro was really static. The front three was really static, and it made it difficult for us to find that killer ball and break the deadlock basically I thought that Bournemouth had a couple of half chances here and there kept making a couple of really good saves but overall we had most of the ball but we couldn't really make any clear cut chances and they went into half time nil nil now the second half begins and it's more of the same I'm not gonna lie it's more of the same but Bournemouth are giving more of a go there was a 10 minute spell when Hazard came on from the 70th minute to the 80th minute where it was all Bournemouth Bournemouth had all of the ball they had all the chances, they had really good clear-cut chances, they were deadly on the counter, and they were fast, it, electric. It was something that we had to be cautious of, and it, and it worried me a lot throughout the game. I'm sure it worried you as well, and it's something that we had to be wary of. Wary of. They kept attacking Dave's side, and I thought that Dave had a relatively poor game, if you ask me. Um, I thought that 10-minute period, born for all over us, and it was rowing. I really thought the born were going to score. Luckily, we defended well. David Luiz came on, Hazard came on on the 60th minute, and he did actually get the winning goal in the 83rd minute. Nice build-up play from Hazard and Pedro. Pedro then flicks it back to Emerson. Emerson leaves it for Hazard. Hazard shoots. It was going in anyway, and it comes off Steve Cook. And it rolls into the net to break the deadlock and make the winning goal. That's another goal for Hazard. Two goals in two games now for him. So he's getting back to his goal scoring form. So that's really, really good news. But when Hazard came on, there was, like I said, a spell where it was all Bournemouth. Now, regarding players' performances, I thought Kepa was really good. He didn't have much to do, but when he was called upon, he did his duty. He was really good. So I thought he had a very good game. Aspilicueta, I thought, was the worst out of the back four. He's been really good in late, really good against Man City, world class, really good against Brighton, etc. So fair play to him, but I thought he was caught out today. Maybe it could be due to fatigue. He's played a lot of games, but I thought, you know... Moussa and Callum Wilson, you know, they, they ran rank, they ran rings around him, if I'm honest. They kept attacking that side. He couldn't recover in time, but, you know, he is not as quick. Um, but he didn't have a great game, in my opinion. Christensen, I thought, defended really well. I thought defensively he had a very, very good performance. It's a shame that he pulled his hamstring right at the end and David Luiz had to come on. Rudiger, I thought, didn't have the best of games, but he was average. He did his job well. Good headers, good clearances, but a couple of misplaced passes, but... You know, it's normal. He's playing every game pretty much. So, cut him some slack. Some average performance by him. Emerson, I thought, was really, really good. You can see why I prefer him over Alonso. Why majority of the Chelsea fan base want Emerson starting. He brings something different. Pace, precision, power. Defensively better. Positioning much better. Linking up with Hazard and with the attack. Really good. Can take on players. He's a perfect left back to you know work under a Sarri system. Alonso, unfortunately, is not press resistant. And he's not a proper left back. He's a left wing back and he doesn't suit the Sari system. Emerson is a proper Sari left back. He's press resistant. His positioning is fantastic. He defends well. His dribbling, his movement, his passing, his link is perfect. For me, Emerson should be starting in our first team, in my opinion. I think there's no excuse for Sari not to pick him anymore. Alonso has been dreadful these past few games. But that's regarding the defence. Now, going into the midfield, Cesc Fabregas, I thought he had a bit of an average game. Didn't really do too much. Couple of nice passes here and there. I thought that he was, you know, just decent, average, nothing spectacular. He didn't do anything 
majorly wrong. So, you know, not too bad from him. Regarding to Matteo Kovacic and Ross Barkley, I thought Ross Barkley again had an average game. Didn't really go forward. There were opportunities where he could have, you know, gone on those runs that Ruben does, which is why I prefer Ruben. He kept, you know, going for the for the safe option. He was more of a passenger at times. Um, he did have a nice shot in the first half, which was nicely saved by Boric. But apart from that, he wasn't really threatening as much. He was always passing it sideways or backwards. So, a bit disappointing, but a bit of an average performance by Ross Barkley. Same with Kovacic. He was really quiet today. He was a bit of a ghost, anonymous. But when he was called upon, he was decent, dribbling past a couple of plays, passing. So, again, another average performance. It was more of an average performance, but it was more of a positive. Like, you could see the squad players mixing in with the first team players. They get up to speed tactically. So, fair play to him, especially likes of Emerson and Christensen. So, I think this is a way forward. I thought, sorry, got the team selection spot on the Tactics, etc. It's just Eddie Howe also set up well. Now, regarding the front three, Giroud, I thought, had a poor game, was very static at times, wasn't moving, which made it very difficult for us to make any proper clear cut opportunities. Now, I thought William was very, very decent. You can see why he's much better on the left wing. He's right footed, he likes to cut in on his right side. He's more of a goal threat when he's on the left hand side. I thought Ruben. You know, being at a position on, on the right wing, I thought was still very, very good. Taking on players, dribbling is the type of performance that we expected Ross Barkley to have, to be honest. I thought he was our most threatening player in the first half. And in general, in the game, I thought he was ex excellent in the second half, hitting the post on one of his shots. And then as soon as Hazard came, the link up was really good. So, in my opinion, Ruben Loftus Cheek should be starting in that midfield. I think that's his best position in the number eight. And then when David Lewis came on, he shored up the fence. Like I said, there was a 10 minute spell with Bournemouth were all over us. Hazard came on, shored it up. Link up was much better, uh, same as Pedro as well. So we got the job done. It was nerve wracking times where we did do what we had to do. We are now into the semi finals of the Carabao Cup. So that's good news. We're still in the competition and we want to win it. It's going to be tough, obviously, having Tottenham Hotspur and Man City in it. But. Hopefully, it's a chance of silverware and sorry to win a trophy at last. If you did enjoy this review, don't, make, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. And comment down below your thoughts and opinions on the game. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.